In this tutorial, we're just going to have a look at the structure of an atom. Atoms are the building blocks of matter and everything we see around us today. If we look at the structure of an atom in more detail by going zooming in on it, if you will, you can see that in the center, a bit like the, the planets going around the sun, so imagine the sun's the center of an atom, we have what's called the nucleus. In the nucleus, we have protons and we have neutrons. Now these protons and neutrons are sometimes referred to as nucleons, but you don't need to remember that really. Protons are positively charged and neutrons are neutral. They don't have any charge whatsoever. Neutrons are slightly heavier, or have slightly more mass, should I say, than protons. But for general consideration, we can just imagine them to have a mass of one. Electrons orbit around the nucleus in what's called shells. Shells only allow certain amounts of electrons to be present within them. So in the first shell, we have two electrons that can be occupied in that shell. In the second shell, we can actually have eight electrons. And in the third shell, we'll stop there, I think, we can have another eight electrons. So it goes two, eight, eight. Now the number of electrons in the shell is actually defined by the number of protons, if you will, which are in the atom. If we look at hydrogen, hydrogen is quite unique in the sense it doesn't have a neutron. So it only has a proton in its nucleus, and that's positively charged. In order to balance that out, we need to have one electron. So the hydrogen atom has one electron and one proton. And so the, whole, or the overall atom itself is neutral. If it lost an electron, it lost a negative charge, then it would just be left with a positively charged nucleus. And that would become a positive proton, or a hydrogen atom. If it gained an electron, then it would increase its negative charge by a factor of one, and become negatively charged, and so on. If we look at something like carbon, in carbon's nucleus, it's got six protons, and the protons are actually what define the element. So if we look at hydrogen, it's got one proton, so it's called hydrogen atom. If we look at helium, it's got two protons, so we call it helium. Lithium has got three protons, and so on, and so on. Now the number of neutrons, the neutral parts of the nucleus, can vary. So for example, if we look at carbon, we'll go back to carbon as an example, Carbon's got six protons, so it is carbon. That's what defines it as carbon. But it can have uh, six neutrons, giving it an overall mass of 12, six and six. So we've got six um, protons and six neutrons, giving a total nuclear mass of 12. Or it can have seven neutrons, giving an overall nuclear mass of 13. Now if you look at the elements on the periodic table, you'll sometimes see a mass number and an atomic number. Now the mass number is basically all the nucleons. So that, when I say nucleons, I mean the protons and the neutrons together. So if you look at carbon as an example, the total mass for carbon-12 is six protons and six neutrons, giving a mass number of 12. Now the atomic number for carbon is only defined by the protons. So it only has six protons, so it has a symbol six there. So you've got a mass number of 12, an atomic number of six. So that's where the different numbers come from. Sometimes you can have slightly varying, varying numbers, so you can have non-whole numbers, you can have like fractional numbers if you will. And we'll come on to that when we look at isotopes and abundance of the elements. So basically, atoms are made out of protons and neutrons, and they're surrounded by electrons. Electrons can occupy shells, and they can go in 2, 8, and 8, depending on which shell they're in. And the actual element is named after the number of protons. So that's what defines the name of the element, if you want. So that's it for this tutorial for now. 
Have a look at some of the worksheets and see if you can identify mass numbers and atomic numbers for yourselves. Bye for now. Thank you.